G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, some really, really good news in the moment. Now look, the market cap is down a little bit, uh, you know, uh, and that's to be expected. We've had a pretty good pump, so a tiny pullback, but this is what's really excited me at the moment. Gath, uh, ETH gas prices, uh, they keep coming down and down and down. Now they do spike up a little bit on occasions. This was at 39 the other day and then it was 44, I think, yesterday. But it's sort of gradually on the decline, so that is great. I think it's really helped that things like Tether and USDC, uh, USDC have moved away from the main chain. Uh, you know, things like Synthetics Network uh, and other of the you know high gas guzzlers have moved to Layer Two solutions. So ETH is now quite um, user friendly. It still needs to come down a long way. We need you know Layer Two solutions to be sort of mass adopted. Uh, and you know, then we can have, you know, it not costing you more than maybe a couple of cents to maybe a dollar, you know, to do any kind of ETH transaction. But as long as it's costing a couple of dollars, uh, it's really not going to be um, widely adopted, let's say. But the dominance still sitting around that 57% mark, and Bitcoin just kind of holding around this 11,000. It sort of fluctuates between about, you know, 11,000. 200 and something and on the higher end to around about 11 5 11 sort of six It's really kind of ranging between there and it'll be interesting to see what happens But what I wanted you to have a look at is this is the chart of silver Is silver a really really good buy now? I bought some silver a while ago, and I'm pretty happy with how it's doing But let's have a look at previous history. So this is the 2008 2009 crash so everything sort of fell off the edge and this is the silver market, but basically everything did pretty much the same. Now let's look at how silver did straight after that. So here's the bottom. It was trading at $8 an ounce. So that's on roughly the 24th of October, 2008. Look what happened. We had a pretty significant pump, bit of a pullback. Prob people probably thought it was over. Another pump, bit of a pullback. Again, people probably thinking that's it. Then it pumped up and there was a lot of choppy sideways action for a while. And then look at this massive rally here. So it went from $8 to basically, let's just round it up to $50. Well, what was that? Was it $8.50? Uh, so yeah, we'll just say $8 because that's sort of rounding down. And this is rounding up to $50. That's one hell of a move. And it did that in, what's that? A little bit over a year. So let's have a look again. 22nd of October, 2008, 9, 10, yeah, well, a little bit over two years, but look at that. That's one hell of a move before it hit its all-time high. So this is what it did after the 2008 uh, global financial crisis. Oh, God, I'm saying that wrong. Global financial crisis. Sorry, excuse me. Struggling with the English there. But that is one hell of a move. So that is a... What's that? Eight, eight fives or forty five. So that's there we go. At least a five x move right there. So let's scroll across and have a look uh, where we are. So this is sort of where silver is at the moment. So this is COVID hit here. Looked at it dump right down here. We've pulled up. And it got to, what did it get to? $29. Now it's pulled back. And now it's ranging a little bit, but slowly sort of growing. But what I want you to notice is the old all-time high. Here it is. This is the old all-time high. So that was the $49. And currently it's sitting at around about sort of $24-ish. So there's basically a 2x if we just get to the old all-time high. But let's move across here. This is the old all-time high, sitting at around about $21. And there's that. So I basically doubled there. So my guess is, and that's all it is, it's just a guess, is I think we're going to hit the old-time high of roughly $49, and then we're gonna possibly double that. Now again, it's just possible, it's not financial advice, I don't know. It's you know, not for sure anyway, it's an educated guess, but this is just based on what it did before. So it had this big ec economic collapse, reached its all-time high again, 
and then basically doubled that, went from 21 to 49. And let's go back and see if it's done things similar. Depends how far back this will go. Maybe it won't go far enough. But we can see here, um, where are we? We need a big one. All right, here. Came down. So there was. this is back in uh, the 2000s. So we hit a peak of roughly sort of $5. Now it's dropped all the way off to $4. There, is that right? We've got, yeah, $5, dropped off to $4. Basically made that sort of high again, a little bit higher. So this is around $5.30. And then look at that, $8. So, you know, nearly doubled. But we just look at silver and it's sort of an oscillator, I guess. You can see, you know, it'll go down and then it'll pump really high. And it's been doing that for a while. So it pumped right up there sold off bit of a fake out there people thought oh we're gonna do it not nah, sold off and then some sideways action before it basically reached uh it's sort of all-time high again a little bit higher and then from nine dollars all the way up to fourteen dollars fifteen dollars so then there you go again it nearly doubled uh from its old old all-time high and then again this is what it's done this is uh where it dumped from twenty one dollars down to eight dollars and then went to 49 dollars and again that 49 dollars was basically twice as much as the old all-time high so i'm keeping an eye on the silver markets now i've built a position i got back into silver uh, i'm going to say somewhere around about probably more here nearly uh, level with this so yeah about 20 sort of dollars it's in australian so uh, it's hard to know exactly what the us dollar is but around about here so i've had a pretty good ride particularly when it got up to there and then it pulled back and I was a little bit worried, but now we can see we're moving back up. And I do think this is, over time, it's not going to happen overnight. It might take, you know, two or three years like it has on the other occasions. But I think we're going to get back to the $49 and I think we're going to double that again. So I, I'm expecting roughly, you know, we can take that up to sort of $50. I'm expecting... Well, expecting is probably a bit word, but I am sort of taking a somewhat educated guess that within the next few years, we might see silver at around about $100 an ounce. Now, look, I could be wrong. I don't know. This is just going back looking at charts, but I am glad that I got into silver not long after here. And again, I think it was somewhere roughly around about here. It was almost in line with this sort of peak over here. So around about sort of $20 uh, an ounce US thereabouts. I'd have to go back and check the exact figures. So I had a pretty good ride and I thought, oh, this is great. Then it pulled back and I got really worried, didn't sell, just held. It was still worth, you know, sort of more than what I bought it for. And now it started to make its way back up again. So if we go into here again, I had this amazing ride, got up to there, it was choppy, sold off. I got really, really worried and now it's starting to make its way back up. And I believe it will continue to make its way up. You can see like this, very similar to the Bitcoin chart a little bit. It's just going up. And then we had that breakout, you know, the Bart Simpson pattern that we'll have a look at shortly. Pulled back and now it's starting to make its way up. So let's have a look at Bitcoin. No, don't need that. So again, broke out, had that Bart Simpson sort of head pattern fell down and now it started to uh, push it up again. Now again, not exactly the same, but still fairly similar. We can see the low from down here and it's just on an upward tra trajectory is the word I'm looking for. And I don't think this is gonna stop any time soon. Does that mean this won't you know, come back and maybe even retest this line? So if we'll just keep going with this line for now. So it is quite possible that this falls over, maybe retest this shorter term trend line here. Uh, but I don't see this trend line here being broken anytime soon. Uh, again, I've said this and I'll say it uh, again and again and again, because this is what I firmly believe. You know, grayscales come out, they've invested. Micro strategies come out, they've invested. Cash uh, app has invested. Other institutional buyers are 100% getting in and doing exactly the same thing, but they are following the micro strategy uh, investment process. Bit by bit, gradually by gradually, just buying tiny little bits, you know, every couple of seconds or minutes or whatever it is. And this isn't all of them, excuse me, got something in my throat there, but this is uh, enough 
that this is going to continue to happen. I don't think this is going to be broken anytime soon. Again, I don't see uh, the $9,600 bit, uh, Bitcoin CME gap getting filled anytime soon. That's not to say it can't be filled. So that's basically somewhere down around here. Yep, possible. It could be done, but I just don't think it is. We can see that, uh, you know, we had this heavy sell off and this is around where the uh, micro strategy news sort of came out. I mean, they were uh, acquiring back here, but even Grayscale were uh, still buying Bitcoin, I think somewhere around about back here, September uh, into sort of, uh, you know, early September, late September, I think they were still buying it. Uh, and so back in here, they were buying it. And I would say they were probably waiting for it to come down and kind of touch these lines. And I would not be surprised if Grayscale still doesn't buy more. And if maybe Cash App doesn't buy more and uh, MicroStrategy doesn't buy more and other companies are going to do the exact same. And as I said, the key levels that we're looking for at the moment is really, we've got to get past that kind of $12,500 level uh, and that'll, you know, bring some more exuberance. But it's once we get past this, you know, and we'll round it up, the $14,000 level mark, once that goes, all the other sort of institutional buyers are still hesitant and unsure about what's going to happen. They are going to pile in at this point because they're going to go, rightio, this is about to break its new all, all its new uh, all-time highs. Because if we've made it here, we're going to get to the next uh the next you know the old time high because there's very little in it from here sorry i'll just have to zone out there is not much from here to here there there really isn't and don't get me wrong some you know disastrous economic news uh there's no coronavirus uh cure or something like that that's really going to hurt uh the markets and all markets uh, it won't matter what you're in at that time there's going to be there's going to be a lot of hurt in the world but once we hit here Provided we don't get any really bad news, this is going to go from 14,000 up to basically sort of 20,000 fairly quickly. And it's going to start to skyrocket past that. That's when the retail buyers get back in. And I, unfortunately, you know, for inexperienced traders and things like that, they want to buy into things that are pumping. They don't want to buy into things that are, have pulled back. Now, again, you've got to know the difference between the bear market and the bull market, in a bear market, you know, by the dip, it doesn't work. You've got to wait for something something to bottom and kind of level out for you to make your decision. So for me, I am watching those kind of key resistance levels. Look, this could roll over and come back and bounce off this. Again, there's that CME gap. We can go over and have a look at that. And it's at sort of $11,110. Sort of you know, we can take it up to around about $11,200. Sort of uh, I, I suspect this will possibly get filled this week sometime. Uh, but look, it may just get skipped like the $9,600 level. Quite possible. But we'll have to wait and see. So very, very interesting. Now, we've been, you know, somewhat fairly heavy, heavily correlated with gold. Let's have a look at the gold charts. We can see gold has actually been coming down all the way since back in uh, August. Now, unfortunately, I bought gold uh, back in August, nearly at its all-time high. So, I mean, my gold, you know, isn't doing too bad. It's not like I've lost heaps, but we've definitely lost a bit. Now, we can see we're finding a little bit of support here, but it's, you know, fallen off a little bit. I'm just looking to see what gold uh, will do. I'm, I'm still uh, bullish on gold uh, in the long term, particularly with all the money printing and everything that's going on. At some stage, that's going to catch up with everything. And when the dollar is hyperinflated, then, you know, things like gold, Bitcoin and all that, they will pump. And, you know, particularly Bitcoin uh, will pump really, really hard. But what I am looking for is that maybe we come back and test this sort of $1,800 level. I'm not saying we will, but this is where that really big move sort of started. And we can see if we draw a bit of a trend line. This is where we're going at the moment. Just move this across there we go so if we stay on there and we want to get to roughly around about here all right so there we go that's the trend line i'll be waiting to see whether we can break or not because at the moment that's the course 
But we have, let's get a horizontal line going here. Horizontal ray. And around about here. There we go. That's the line I'm looking for. Whether we're going to break down below this or whether we're going to break out of this current downward trend. But I think this would be a pretty good buy opportunity. And again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion, around about 800. If it gets down to around about there, I'll probably get into some more gold. Uh, and again, I, I really, even if it does get here or below, I don't see it dropping sort of too far. You know, it might drop down another thousand, couple of hundred dollars or something like that. But I don't think it's going to go much lower. And in the long term, I am bullish on gold. I do see it uh, continuing to go up. That's just my personal opinion. So gold um you know i'm not saying you couldn't buy in here and again you know i bought in sort of a roundabout here i think i'm only just barely in profit or maybe even a tiny little bit of loss it was in the sort of 1800s uh 1800 uh, dollar range that i bought into gold silver has done a lot better for me and again we're still watching for that cme gap so bitcoin may fall off and come back and cover that we'll have to wait and see but silver i am bullish on silver at the moment. I do see this as just continuing to go up. And again, I think we are going to come back and test this all time high and basically double it because that's what silver has done on previous occasions. It won't happen overnight though. It's not cryptocurrency. I think it's probably going to take two or three years. But if I'm correct, this is still not a bad price to get into uh, silver considering we're $24. It'll double to get to $49, and then 49 doubles again. That's basically a 4x on the price of silver from where it currently is. And there is some uh, bullish uh, sort of sentiment out there about where the price of silver and gold could go to because they believe they have been uh, manipulated to the low side for years. Uh, and that'll be interesting. And I've heard people say things like gold could go to twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 an ounce, and silver could go, I think they said something like ten. Uh, five thousand or ten thousand dollars an ounce maybe even higher so from a twenty four dollar an ounce buy-in to something excuse me going to five thousand dollars that's a lot of money again not financial advice you make up your own decision that's just something that I'm sort of keeping in mind now I want to go over here Uniswap so what I noticed on the Uniswap chart is obviously it had its peak and it's had this big sell-off but it seems to have leveled out and this seems to be like maybe an accumulation phase happening right here so i decided to get in i've bought myself some uniswap uh, i didn't get any free uniswap because i never used it the fees were just too expensive and i was really uh, dubious about a lot of the things that were going you know all these new DeFi projects that everyone was diving into and a ton of people got burnt so i didn't want to use uniswap now that's not to say that i don't think uniswap is good i just think there was that whole mania going on and there was a lot of scams and things like that out there so it wasn't for me i didn't want to touch it but i like the platform uh, and i like the idea of it and what it's doing so i've got myself some uniswap not a whole lot just a small bag but you know I do see there being some serious price appreciation for that in the future. And again, I've got to say it over and over again, this is not financial advice, this is just my personal opinion, and these are the things that I'm doing. If you decide you want to do the same, then that's your decision. Don't do it because I'm saying that I'm doing it, and I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying this is my thoughts. That's what this vlog is all about. Uh, it's just my thoughts on the market, what I'm doing, what I think might be good. If you want to make that decision to follow me, then you've got to understand that there's a risk that it all just goes to zero. And I understand that. That's the risk of investing full stop. It doesn't matter what you're in. Even Apple, Tesla and all of that, it's not impossible that they don't suddenly go belly up and turn to zero. It's just unlikely, but not impossible. And so it's the same with uh, cryptocurrencies, although the risks are substantially higher they're very new they're untested not so much bitcoin bitcoin i think uh try true and tested uh and i don't think it's going anywhere personal opinion only uh ethereum i think it's going to be around i think it's going to be massive personal opinion only i think xrp at some stage hopefully will be adopted but it's got so many partnerships and things like that that i just i think it's impossible that it doesn't get adopted and used uh, and so they're the ones I'm sort of, you know, I think are the safer bet, but I have money in a lot of other things. And again, I got into Uniswap, so I think it was around about $4 or something, uh, a little bit less than, I think it was $4 Australian. So I'm going to say it was probably 
three dollars fifty or something so it's come down a little bit since i've uh, got in but again i see this is just an accumulation phase now it's traveling sideways and it has been for uh you know a few days now at least and i think this will just continue i think the downward spiral i think this has been the bottom and now this is just an accumulation phase all right last but not least so Aave, they have raised 25 million dollars to bring DeFi closer to institutional use now there was a couple of uh, venture capital funds that got in so it was led by blockchain capital standard crypto and blockchain.com ventures uh, amongst other investors so they've put money in uh, and Aave is looking to you know be adopted by the big institutional buyers now if that happens Aave will be massive I mean absolutely massive and the reason I say that is because number one well if they get institutional use it's you know just the way it works but we need to remember not that long ago Aave got its uh, digital license uh, financial license in the UK so it is already uh, sort of regulated over there it has its license it can operate now it's looking at moving into Asian markets and I'm sure it won't be long before then it moves into you know the US markets and Australian markets and all that kind of stuff so I am super bullish on Aave and I am thinking of now making Aave part of my uh, DCEA so dollar cost averaging approach so a dollar cost average on Bitcoin uh, I didn't buy any Bitcoin this uh, this time I got myself some Ethereum. I bought some Ren because Ren was down heaps. Uh, a few DeFi plays and Ethereum, and obviously Uniswap. But I will be back to you know dollar cost averaging with Bitcoin. I just saw some things that are uh, were down substantially, and it was time to get in before they pumped even harder. And again, look, they still could sell off. Like I said, there's a chance that Bitcoin rolls over, covers that CME gap at eleven thousand, sort of one hundred, two hundred. And it's not impossible that it doesn't roll over and cover that CME gap at 9,600. I just don't see it happening. That's my personal opinion. But uh, Ave, Ave, I don't know how you pronounce it. I am really bullish on Ave. You know, again, they've already been licensed over in the UK. The, you know, people are investing more money into them, uh, you know, moving into the Asian markets uh, and going for that institutional use. That is where the, you know, the sort of, I won't say the big money because the big money is in retail, but if institutions adopt it and then they push it to the uh, retail buyers, that's where the real big money comes from. People who don't understand crypto and don't know crypto and are just really fearful of crypto, if all of a sudden their banks and financial financial institutions and that are saying, here, look, this is good, this is what we want you to use, then they'll just jump straight on board. That's the way it works. They trust banks. You know, most of us, you know, kind of trust banks to a certain point. Uh, and, you know, for those who are less educated about finances and cryptocurrencies and things like that, they just uh, trust banks almost in, in complicitly. Uh, you know, whatever the bank says, they're just like, yep, yeah, we're going to do that. So massive news for Aave. I am super bullish on Aave and I think they may become part of my uh, DCAing approach. And I DCA on Bitcoin and Ethereum. I haven't DCA'd on XRP because I just, I've, you know, I've got a reasonable stash of XRP. Uh, you know, for me anyway, again, it's not thousands and thousands of dollars or anything like that. And definitely not tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars. I wish I had that kind of money. But I've got a position in XRP where I'm kind of happy with it. It's not to say I won't buy any later. I just haven't been DCAing. My DCAing has been Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're the ones that I constantly you know, buy on a weekly, fortnightly basis. Whenever I've got some uh, spare cash, that's my DCA. And I think uh, Aave might become uh, that as well. And I am considering maybe doing the same with synthetic, Synthetics Network. Although, you know, it's pumped so much. I got into it at around 84 uh, cents US. Uh, and now uh, it's quite high. Let's go and have a look. Where is Synthetics Network? So there you go. It's at $4.53. Sort of so it's already a lot more. That's not to say I don't think it can go higher. I do. Uh, 
and actually I did buy some synthetics network <laughs> completely forgot so I bought a few synthetics network the other day uh, and th they are down uh, but again, I, I wish I had a board back here, but I was just unsure and I didn't pull the trigger. Uh, and then that's when Bitcoin had its pump and everything sort of followed. Still cheap compared to where it was. This was up around sort of $8 a while ago. It's almost sort of twice the price. Uh, so I was pretty happy to get into Synthetics Network. And again, I'm trying to consider whether I want a DCA on Synthetics Network. And again, it's not that I don't like them. I love Synthetics Network. It's just that it's pumped so much already. But that's not to say I don't think it can go much, much higher. I'll just have to, you know, sit down and have a think. But again, Aave, you know, only 53 cents. Uh, but don't get me wrong, it has pumped a lot as well. But, you know, that news of institutional adoption and the news of, uh, you know, it's already licensed. That's what makes me super bullish on it, at least in the UK. Synthetics Network, it's a decentralized platform. Uh, so whether, you know, mass adoption will happen and things like that, I don't know. But I, I, th I think a lot of people will get into it and I think uh, institutions will, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. So again, still bullish on them, just not sure if I'm going to DCA uh, on Synthetics Network or not at the moment. All right, well, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.